right, so hopefully you guys are still familiar with uh, parabolas from Math 11. Hands up. Are, are you still remember parabolas slightly? Okay, because that's where we're going to work from what you sort of remember, hopefully refresh your memory, and then bring you up to the Math 12 side of things. So this lesson here is going to start with just the plain old-fashioned average Joe parabola. And that is not... Let me try 120. I'm trying to get the lines to show a little easier. Okay, well, that's better. So the plain parabola, the one that you'd start with, if you already remember it, you can go ahead and fill it in, but that's all I'm going to do here. And it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. I'm a terrible artist, but a few points and I get the general shape of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my graphing calculator and compare it to the same parabola, but this time there's a minus 2 here. So... If you're not uh, familiar with your TI-83, this is where you go to put in an equation, and it'll be x squared minus 2. And the window that I want to see is going to be what shows up on that screen. So I'm going to go, I don't need that much of an x value. I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3. And I don't need to go all the way down to negative 10. I'm probably going to go to like negative, uh, let's go with 3 still. And I need to go a little higher in order to see this graph. So I think 18 should do it. So that just gives me a nice picture. So there's that parabola, the way it looks. And I'm going to transfer those points onto my page. So here's where it should be now on this graph. Anyone care to take a guess at what what has happened? Could you describe that to me? That was very polite, but yeah, it's it's okay. You can. Uh, I was trying to give people a chance to catch up, and he stole your thunder, huh? Yeah, down two units. Hey, no problem. It's just you're so excited about math, right, that you can't hold it in. So down two. Yeah, and that should kind of make some sense to you, right? If I subtract two, it's going to move the graph down two. So make a prediction for me. What do you think is going to happen in the next graph? Yeah. Yeah, this one was plus 3. So when I put in the equation this time, instead of being, normally it would be right where the mouse tip is there. If I change this to plus 3. Now it's moved from there up 1, 2, 3 three units. So this graph is three units higher now when I look for it. Whoops. So three units higher. But the same shape. Oops, that's a terrible parabola. All right, so we want to be able to come up with a rule to describe this. Um, we already discussed this. This graph is related to the original by shifting the graph two units down. And this one by you <coughs> shifting the graph three units up. So something that's going to be new to you is a mapping notation. And the way it's going to look is it's going to look like this. Um, the point x, y is going to go to... Oops, sorry. And I don't know why it is, but usually K is used for that, uh, that letter. So this transformation we're looking at, it takes a point. It does nothing to the x-coordinate here. This x-coordinate is the same as it is here, unaffected. But this y-coordinate, what we do is we add whatever value. So if we're adding a negative, it's subtracted it. If we're adding the positive, it's adding to it. Okay, so that's what this mapping notation looks like. This time we're going to take a look at a slightly different translation. This time um, I'm going to change the average parabola that we start with. So I'll just put it down again so you can reference it. And 
and I'm going to this time compare it with x minus 2 the whole thing squared. Okay, so this is x squared. Anyone want to make a prediction? What do you think is going to happen? I'll give you hints. It's not going to go up and down anymore. It's going to go horizontally. What do you, how much, where? Yeah, Tony. Two to the right. Two to the right. Okay, anybody else? How come two to the right then? Everybody seems to think two to the right. Because you remember from last year? Why not two to the left? Anybody want to, anyone want to gamble and take two to the left? <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the two graphs and see what we have. There's the original. And, yep, you're right, Tony. It's two to the right now. It's been moved over. Okay. I'm going to switch the window a little bit so you can see the picture better. So there's the original, and there's the new graph, exactly over by two, two units to the right. Okay, so here's where I find it now. So for the last one, it's going to be x plus 3. Anyone want to boldly guess? Left, 3. Okay. And we have a winner. Okay, 3 to the left. Okay, so we're going to see that picture again. And we're going to end up moving it 3 to the left. By the way, if you're using your own set of graph paper instead of the notes, you may want to put them all on the same graph. Just label them nicely and you'll be able to find them. Okay, well that parabola is not the greatest, but you can see the shift here again. We said it went two units to the right, and this one went three units to the left. Okay, so I want you guys to see if you can figure out how to write that mapping notation. Okay, if what I start with is this one here, how could I write that? I'm going to go first. I'm going to do one of them. See these guys we just did? I'm going to do this one. Okay, what happens in this one is if you give me an X and a Y, it's going to become 2 to the right. So x plus 2y. Okay. See if you can do the next one and this generic one, like if it's all letters. Okay. We'll pause for a sec, see if you can do those. Okay. So for the second one, what happens is it goes three units to the left. So when you move left on the graph, that means you're going to subtract. So it's going to be x minus 3 that I end up changing it. Now if I've got any particular letter, like x minus h, okay, the reason I've got to be careful there is subtraction's funny, right? This would be like x minus a 2, but this one here is going to be like x minus negative 3. So the reason that this works out nicely is that it's a positive 2 because it moves 2 to the right. It's a negative 3 because it moves 3 to the left. That's the same way the graph lines up. So that's why it's x minus h here. But what happens is when you take that point, you're going to end up with x plus h, y. Okay. So that's the one you got to be careful about. If you want to make a note to yourself, this is probably the most common mistake you're going to make. Be careful, that one is the tricky one. Think about which direction it's moving before you move it. 
All right. Now, of course, I can't just give you graphs that you can use your graphing calculator on, or there's no point. Um, what I want to be able to do is see that you can do this for anything. So anybody going into computer science, like they want to do gaming, huge industry in Vancouver, like billion dollar industry. No gamers here? Maybe? Okay. Um, transformations, big part of software gaming, because all the times those figures are moving, the computer's not necessarily redrawing every pixel, it's just moving those pixels, because that's more efficient, right, than having to redraw everything from scratch. So the way the graphs are moved around, huge if you're going into gaming. Um, even if not, if you're going to do uh, some kind of science and you get a bunch of lab data, your data ends up, you know, maybe it looks like this on the graph. And you're such a good math student, you say, hey, you know what? That just looks like a bit like a square root graph. And you might do a rough sketch and say, oh, yeah, 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 look, it'll fit pretty well if I use a square root graph. The question is, which square root graph is it? You need to know how to mold and move and stretch and squish that graph until it looks like your data. Now, don't worry. In the real world, we have very powerful computers that can do this for you. But for now, I get to torture you into doing it by hand. So um, that's what the transformations unit is most uh, applicable to in the real world is fitting data to a, a model. Okay. So for now, we're just going to play around with some shapes. Okay. This is a triangle. <laughs> yeah, as if you didn't already know. Thanks, Mr. Joyce. Um, what does this transformation say I'm going to do? This is the math. Tell me what it says. Left three, yeah, so this is left three. This says down two. So what I'm going to do is take each point, and I can map it. That point is 0, 10. I'm going to map it to negative 3, 8. Left three, down two. Same thing if I take this point. This is the point negative 3, 7. And I'm going to map it to 3 left and 2 down. And the final point on that triangle here is 3, 7. So it's going to become 0, 5. And one nice thing about this unit is very visual, right? If I came up with this as my final graph, Do you think that went well? It doesn't look like I've moved that triangle. This is a different triangle, right? So that tells you one of your points or maybe more are off. So it's good visually. You can double check what you're doing. And you'll see what I mean when we draw this final points. Negative 3, 8 is here. Uh, negative 6, 5 here. Negative, sorry, and then 0, 5 is here. So, okay, yeah, there's the same triangle that's been moved left three and down two. Well, to the best of my lacking artistic abilities. Okay. So you try the next one. I'm going to do it while you do it, and then we'll see how we've done. Okay, so you might still be doing your pen work, um, drawing in your picture. The transformation we're looking for is right one up two. There's the mapping of points that I've made here. If you have the same points as me, your picture should look the same as mine. Okay, so here's the next shape. There's the next two transformations. You pick one transformation, but I'll do both, okay? If you pick uh, whatever transformation you picked, I still want you to look at the other transformation and just tell me what it would do. You don't have to draw the second transformation, but tell me what it would do to the graph. Okay, so, oops, I got a one second here. Just got to update this for you. There we go. So here are the transformed points. Each of these is the mapping. The mapping here was left 3 and up 2. And the mapping here was if you went right by 3 and down by 1. OK, so. Uh, did anybody do both of the graphs, get them done? OK, fair enough. So let me just see then. The one that you did pick, hands up if uh, you got it correct. You're a pro at this. OK, good. So let's move on. Um, what I'm going to do now is we've got this uh, transformation. Let's put it all together in one mapping. So this time I say I'm going to move it 
by h and k, what do you think is going to happen if I wanted to give someone a formula? How do you change that? Right? That's what the mapping is. Right? It's kind of like the formula to finding those points. So what do you think? Someone want to give me the x coordinate? Yeah, that's right, x plus h. And the y coordinate? Yeah, plus k. So me, I don't really, I know how to do the mapping notation, but I don't try to memorize the, uh, you know, that algebraic side of things. Some people like having a formula. I find it's easiest if every time I get to the question, I remind myself by saying it in English first, like left three up two. That's easier for me to work with than x plus h and x plus k or whatever. But it's preference, right? Some of you will want the formula, some of you won't. All right. Okay, so this time I want you to look at the picture and tell me what you think has happened. And in case it's hard for you to see those points, I'll highlight them to you. This is a 2, 1. Uh, this is 7, 6, and this is the point negative 3, 6. And the moved graph, this new one I'm looking at, I'll put the points up here for you. Negative 8, 0, 2, 0, and negative 3, negative, oops, 5. Okay, so have a look. Talk with your partner. What's the transformation? I want to know it in English, and I want to see a map of it. Okay, so you'll have two answers. One which says, right 45 and down 602, and another that has the mapping. Okay, tell me about the graph. How about horizontally? Can somebody volunteer themselves? Take a risk. What do you think happened? Horizontal, left and right. What happened to this graph? It went five to the left. It did go five left. What you can do is you take, say, this point on the graph. Here is where it was originally. To get from here to there, I had to go from 2 to negative 3. How do you do that? You move left 5. I think most of you figured that out, but that's what we did. Um, how about vertically? Someone want to risk it, tell us what they think happened? Down by 6. Down by six. So again, if you started with a 1 and you are now a, f a negative 5, you had to go down by 6. So here's your transformations. You've got um, left 5, down 6. We could say that as the point x, y would go to the point x minus 5, y minus 6. Okay. All right. Discussion again. Last one. What happened to this graph? Sure, I'll put those coordinates. Okay, so tell me about this graph. What's happened? Uh, I don't pick one, vertical or horizontal. What's happened? Yeah. Right six up five? Four. Four. Okay, let's check it out. I want to believe you, but let's check. Okay, right six. So pick a point. Negative four becomes two. So yeah, we definitely went right six. And what did you say it was? Up four. Okay. So we'll pick another point, doesn't matter which one. Um, let's pick this one. Negative 3 becomes 1. So yeah, you definitely had to move up 4 to get there. So there's the English translation. Here is the mapping. x, y becomes move right 6 oops, and up 4. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs>